Welcome to Friday. It's May 10th, 2024. Your day weather podcast brought to you by Wyoming State Parks. May is here and now's the perfect time to start making plans for those summer adventures. What better place to spend time outdoors than a Wyoming State Park or historic site? Visit wildparks.org for more information. Well, going to be an interesting podcast this morning because two things I think that are kind of exciting. One, the weather's getting better. Maybe not so much snow on the ground like we're seeing there from Paul and Laramie yesterday. And we've got a possible solar event. In fact, it's looking very likely that there is going to be potentially some aurora borealis down into the mid-latitudes. And this is going to be possibly the strongest event, maybe going back to the early 2000s. But the good news is, is that with the weather, conditions are going to slowly improve. Today through the weekend, we're still going to have some showers and some thunderstorms around. Now it is gonna be warmer for the weekend. Some scattered afternoon showers and thunderstorms are gonna be possible as we have a little piece of this storm that's hanging back, but we're talking about mainly afternoon stuff that pops up as the warmer part of the day wears on, kind of a, a spring-like pattern, and that's gonna go all the way into early next week. We're gonna have some ups and downs still. We have a cold front coming in Tuesday and Wednesday, not a terribly strong one when it comes to temperature, but it will trigger showers and thunderstorms, cool us off a bit. Another front comes through Friday, then we could have a, a pretty big week weekend next weekend, the weekend after this. The weekend of the 18th and 19th could be quite warm in the West as we start to see the weather start to transition. Then we'll talk about here at the end this possible solar storm and maybe getting to see in some areas the Aurora Borealis. We'll take a look at some great photos. It's springtime in the Rockies in Driggs, Idaho. Not too long ago, there was snow on the ground. Now, with the warmer temperatures, things are going to be greening up and greening up, especially for you folks lucky enough to get the significant moisture over this past uh, week with this very slow-moving storm. You know, we had three feet of snow in some of the mountains of southern and southwest Montana and northern Wyoming out of this storm, and some good moisture on the plains. But down in Texas, too, Bridgeport, Texas, a great shot of some threatening skies down there. And if we take a look at what we're seeing on the satellite imagery this morning, certainly that storm doesn't look as impressive as it did earlier in the week, but the remains of it are hanging back. See all the blue low stratus clouds hanging back over Wyoming, some higher enhancement clouds and some showers down in Colorado. If you look real close, you see the spin right here? right here over central Nevada. That's what came off and broke apart and headed southwestward and is going to sit there and then slowly drift eastward today and into the weekend just like this before moving on through. Now it's lost a lot of its moxie, but you can see the counterclockwise circulation. So it is going to be drawing up some moisture into the area. The heat of the day will trigger some scattered showers and thunderstorms underneath that upper level low. But notice the clearing, and we'll talk about this when we talk about the possible aurora here in a minute as high pressure is building into the Pacific Northwest. There you can see the low where it is this morning. That's where it's going to be by Sunday morning. And so we're probably looking at the wettest weather for you folks in Colorado. Probably think Colorado and into northern New Mexico, western Kansas, the Panhandles, will probably have the worst weather for Mother's Day, Sunday. But it's also going to bring those areas some badly needed rain. Rain chances there look pretty good, and you can see that. This is the precipitation forecast that will occur through Sunday evening. So you can see southern Colorado, parts of New Mexico there, the Panhandles, western Kansas, eastern Colorado. We're going to see some shower and thunderstorm activity this weekend across portions of Wyoming, Nebraska, back into Utah. Mainly this is the stuff that is going to form during the afternoon and evening hours. If we look at where the lightning prediction is today, you can see it lines up pretty good with that low, doesn't it? This is today, this is Saturday. You can see the eastward push, and then by Sunday, shower and thunderstorm activity gets a little bit more active across the region. A very spring-like pattern. Getting more spring-like, that arch of warmth comes around that high. It's cool. This is through five days, so this is through Tuesday. Temperatures are still going to be a little bit cool here, relative to average under those thicker and deeper clouds, but warming up kind of on top. So the warming trend will come in from the north and the west as we go into the weekend and early next week. Here's the frontal system for Tuesday. Coming in out of British Columbia, again, it's not going to be as cold as what just came through, but it will trigger some weather in that Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. 
that's followed by another one. That's Friday. So this is Tuesday. This is Friday. See how another one comes in right behind it? But as we get into next weekend, this is by next Sunday, if this transpires and we're thinking this will, this is a very robust high, it's going to really pump in some warmth from the desert states. So a weekend from now, we could be taking a look at maybe some of the warmest temperatures of the season so far. And I think that's what everybody wants, finally, warming on up. Now, I want to spend some time on the solar activity. We'll spend more time on it than we usually do because this is a special event that's coming on up. I want to thank Jan Curtis, an Aurora photographer and Aurora expert who got a great shot of the big sunspot that's responsible for what we're going to be talking about right here. Very large sunspot field. This really is, is a quite big one, and it's been throwing out coronal mass ejections. So many coronal mass ejections, in fact, five of them, the Space Weather Prediction Center has issued its first G4 watch since 2005. Well, you say, what's a G4? What's that mean? Well, it's a geomagnetic storm, geomagnetic storm watch. It goes to five. So we're four out of five. So we're pretty high on the scale here. And if you look, this is from the satellite SOHO that tracks the activity on the sun. And you can see these coronal mass ejections. You can see them radiate out from the sun. So there have been five of these over the last several days, and they're going to be Earth directed. Keep in mind, these can work together in terms of just one mass ejection can cruise a lot, but when you put five together, they will kind of come together and will form a wave. And it's really showing up really well here. What I want you to pay attention to is this arch. You see these dots? Okay, if you look at the dots, here's the sun, the yellow dot. Earth is the green dot, and you can see this wave coming at Earth, very strong. It's Earth-directed, and if you look right here on this graph, the line that I'm showing you is about where the wave's going to be and the prediction of how the atmosphere could respond to this coming on through. This is a very impressive event, much stronger than we've seen all year, and again, going back to a long time. So a geomagnetic Geomagnetic storm watch has been issued. Now it says for May 11th, okay? Today is the 10th, but this is really gonna be happening tonight overnight into the 11th. So uh, this is a situation to where uh, it says the 11th, but you wanna be ready tonight. If you look right here, watches at this level are very rare. So we don't get to see this very often. So be prepared. The, the question is, is that how far south will these get? These are extremely tricky to predict and extremely tricky, especially at mid latitudes, whether or not it's something you're going to see with your naked eye, or is it something you're going to catch with your camera? Now at the mid latitudes, generally it's the camera. If you're a digital photographer, here's a good opportunity. Seeing it with your eye at the mid latitudes is a treat. It doesn't happen very often, but it's on the table. It's not guaranteed, but it's on the table. And if we, we're just going down to brass tacks and looking at some of the, the data and the numbers that we see starting later today and tonight, you can see the number increasing here as we get into later today. But right here, as we get into the late evening and overnight hours, you see G1, G3, G4, G3. So we're talking about a very strong event that's also going to go into Saturday night, Sunday morning. So it could go two nights, but tonight looks to be the peak. So, as I mentioned earlier, seeing them in, in photography, photography situations are two different scenarios. You can get a lot with a digital camera. Seeing them is a treat. Hopefully, you'll be able to do it. But if you want to capture them, get out your digital cameras. It looks like, and some help from Jan Curtis here, it looks like in the, in the mountain time zone, between 11 o'clock tonight and 4 a.m. Saturday, is when it's expected to peak. And so one metric uh, is called AP. And when we get over that three value, that really increases the opportunity for auroras to form. So we'll see what happens, but this is an opportunity. Will the weather cooperate? Well, we'll show you that here in a moment. These are two really good websites to go to throughout the day today and into the nighttime hours to kind of keep track of what's going on with the possible aurora. Now, here's the forecast for cloud cover tonight. So this goes from this morning through the overnight hours to 6 a.m. Saturday. What you're gonna notice is a clearing trend happening in Montana and Wyoming, Idaho, and this region right here. 
but do notice there's a lot of cloud cover predicted in Colorado. And that's due to that upper level low there. So there's a real opportunity, it looks like, in this area right here, as we go into tonight and tomorrow morning with the clouds lessening, Colorado is gonna be a little bit of a more difficult problem. So that's tonight. The, the trend in the cloud prediction is really going in our favor for a lot of areas in the Western United States. If you're somewhere else in the US, lower 48, this is what the cloud prediction looks like as we get into the evening and overnight hours. So some of you might not get a lot of sleep tonight. It may be worth it, we'll see. There's been duds before and I gotta warn you, a lot of times these can be overhyped but this is a strong event. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Happy sky watching. We'll see you on Monday.